20 and 6 versus 16 and 3. Two outstanding featherweights looking to put themselves into a position to possibly get that title match. We'll see what happens. Here, once again, Michael C. Williams. Bellator MMA now presents the co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Live on Showtime, we introduce first the blue corner. At 5'11", weighing in 145 and 3 quarter pounds, his professional record, 16 wins, 3 losses, from Missouri, British Columbia, Canada, he fights out of Las Vegas, Nevada, Jeremy, J.B.C. Kennedy. And across the ring, the cage, rather, his adversary, out of the red corner, at five foot nine, weighing in 145 and one quarter pounds, the two time Bellator title challenger brings 20 professional victories, six defeats, fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Emmanuel and Matador Sanchez. And the referee in charge, Dan Bergliano. Kennedy with three wins in the first round. Sanchez with six wins in the opening round and first round underway. Sanchez rushes to the center of the cage, touches gloves with Kennedy. What do you look for early in this fight, John? What I look for from Sanchez is a pressure, a constant pressure with a lot of volume attack on Jeremy Kennedy. Don't try to hit him hard, just try to keep touching him. And Jeremy Kennedy's got to figure out that footwork pattern that Emmanuel Sanchez uses. He changes back and forth, but he needs to get into that position right there to get his takedowns, and he needs to be effective with the takedown and keeping him on the ground. Sanchez competing in his 18th Bellator featherweight bout. That's tied with current champion A.J. McKee for the second most appearances in divisional history behind Patricio Pitbull, 23. A minute gone here as Sanchez looking for the Kimura. Well, it was a nice job of Sanchez stepping over like almost getting that Kimura to actually have an effect. Jeremy kept his composure, kept his hands locked, and was right back to it. Now he doesn't have that Kimura grip, and he's in a position with a high crotch. He can get Sanchez onto the ground. Look at where he's looking. He's posture, very smart, tactical, and he's not burning a lot of energy from the position. Catch wrestler texted me, said, hey, double wrist lock. <laughs> yeah. Either way you want to call it. It's they're painful. Both right. They're both right. Yes. Sanchez very aware of his surroundings, even taking a look at his corner as Kennedy lifts him up and takes him down. Elevation by Jeremy Kennedy. I am And he needs to just now force his back to the canvas like he's doing. Sanchez is very active from this position, and Kennedy needs to move this position up to stop those blows. You see Sanchez looking for a normal plotter there. He can use that not only as a submission, but just to sweep and get himself to the top position. Kennedy began training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when he was 13. There's a brown belt under Viviano Fernandez. He started competing in pancreation, which of course allows a bit of striking along with takedowns when he was 16. So he's a lifer when it comes to MMA, representing the, the next generation of mixed martial artists. No doubt about it. He's in the half guard position here. But this is where Sanchez needs to make sure that he does not settle for position. He's got to continuously work to get back to his feet or get into that position where we talk about the three S's. He needs to either look for the sweep, the submission, or get back to the standup. Nice escape. That's you talked about right there. the three S's when it came to Japanese MMA at the start of the show with Kyoji Uraguchi coming up. You mentioned Sato, Sakurai, and Sakuraba. 
That's very true. Really looking forward to the main event and what is at stake there, but so much at stake here in this meeting between top 10 ranked featherweights. And again with Sanchez, who was experiencing the first two fight losing streak of his long career. Well, Jeremy Kennedy doing a great job of being Velcro. He has stuck to Emmanuel Sanchez. This is exactly what his coach, Eric Nixon, wants out of him because this is where he can win the fight. If he gets into the open area of the cage with Sanchez on the feet, that is not his area to win this fight. And Sanchez looking for that curling knee bar attempt, but just now on his back, hammer fist from the bottom. In a position to possibly look towards you know, the, the triangle choke right here, and that is Sanchez's favorite yes. submission. It's what he says he gets more often than anything in training. And he has three triangle choke submissions to go along with three rear naked chokes, an arm triangle and an arm bar, but Kennedy defending here in the first round. Nice posture by Kennedy, that's gonna defend against. That position right now, there is no triangle. We're talking about a high guard with a good body position by Jeremy Kennedy just defending. Kennedy has never been submitted. But this is what, if you're Emmanuel Sanchez, you've now put Kennedy, who's in the top position, on the defense. He cannot do anything offensive right now because he's got to be worried about that triangle getting locked up. And time will run out on Sanchez's attempt as Kennedy delivers some punches within the guard to close out the round. And move. Okay. A big night for Rufus Sport out of Milwaukee. Duke Rufus training both Emmanuel Sanchez and he will be in the corner of the Bellator Bantamweight champion Sergio Pettis in tonight's main event. Kennedy meanwhile receiving expert instructions from his trainer Eric Nixick out of Extreme Couture in Las Vegas. And John, how do you have it on your unofficial scorecard? Unofficially, I'm gonna give that round to Sanchez based upon, yes, Jeremy Kennedy took him down and he controlled a lot of where the fight was at. He wasn't able to land anything and there was no submission attempts out of him. And I saw that out of Sanchez, so right now, it's close and it could go either way, but I'm gonna go with Sanchez. Sanchez looking to run the pipe on the single, turning it into a double, now has the waist lock from the back. In the first 30 seconds of the second round. But notice the difference, at least when Sanchez has this body lock, he's landing knee strikes. He's doing something more than just controlling the position. Sanchez, proud Mexican-American. His parents came to the United States in search of the American dream. And, and wow! Nice job by Jeremy Kennedy. He's the one who did that maneuver. Beautiful foot sweep. Kennedy now in top position, half butterfly hook employed by Sanchez, and he is delivering hammer fist from the bottom, trying to keep Kennedy distracted. Looking towards that omoplata, you see that Jeremy Kennedy is defending it. He's holding that arm against, Oops. using the weight of Sanchez to make it so he cannot slide it around. Slashing elbow and hammer fist, and another elbow, another elbow by Sanchez as Blood begins to decorate the canvas and the fighters' bodies. And this right now is the difference. You're seeing Sanchez at least trying to strike. I've seen one strike land for Jeremy Kennedy since he got that takedown. You just need to see a little bit more out of him. Two minutes elapsed here in round two. Waist lock by Kennedy. Sanchez back on his feet along the fence, looking to break the grip. And Kennedy wanting to launch another Iambu do takedown, and Sanchez against the fence. Sanchez working hard, and Kennedy doing a great job with his body position, using that head as a third arm to grind him towards the canvas. This is exactly where Jeremy Kennedy needs to be. Now we just need to see him open up a little bit and start to try to either look for the submission or do some damage with strikes. Kennedy facing one of the most battle-tested 145-pound fighters on the planet. Come on, Manny, slow. Go, 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 go. Yes. Kennedy spinning north-south and 
Sanchez active on the bottom. Sanchez has been very active, but he has nothing there. And what Jeremy Kennedy is allowing him to do is just slide underneath him. Yes, he's moving, but there's no active submission there. Is that just a change of position? Yeah, Kennedy in side control now looking to take the back of Sanchez. And Jim, Jeremy Kennedy putting his hooks in, John, and looking for the submission. Very nice job by Jeremy Kennedy. Get the back. He's controlling right there. He's only got one hook now. Sanchez was able to free his right leg. But Jeremy Kennedy in what we call a seatbelt position there. And Kennedy with two submission wins, including a rear naked choke. The last submission victory was via RNC against Andre De Silva back in August 2014. Jeremy Kennedy trying to land a couple strikes to open up Sanchez. Sanchez throwing those strikes back, but they, they mean nothing. There's no power to him. You can't do any damage with him. Final minute of the second. Sanchez desperate to try to get the fight back to its feet. Great grappling transitions by both fighters. Sanchez always moving, always creating an opening. Jeremy Kennedy trying to flow with it. Yeah, and he puts his pressure, puts his weight on Sanchez. Wide base, final half minute of the second. Both fighters back on their feet here with Sanchez stapled to the fence. Kennedy, six of seven in the takedown department. Sanchez, 0 for two. As we near the end of round number two. Grueling battle at 145. Former Bellator champion dethroned Darion Caldwell was forced to uh, vacate the title, chose to do so after suffering a knee injury that required surgery November 2019. And he is back to claim what he never lost. That's in the main event right now. Another crucial matchup at 145, the third and final round. Eric Nixick doing his best to motivate Jeremy Kennedy. And Kennedy gets the takedown to begin the third round. Jeremy Kennedy responding. I look at this fight, I haven't either. It's going to be one of two things. Jeremy Kennedy is up two rounds to nothing, or it's even at best for Sanchez. Take a look at him taking the back right now. Sanchez was able to work his way through this against the cage. Can he do the same thing? Body lock. Got a body triangle now by Jeremy Kennedy. Now it's all about the hands. The hand fighting begins. Emmanuel Sanchez is very adept at being able to defend against the choke. Sanchez has been submitted just once. A technical sub guillotine choke against the aforementioned Patricio Pitbull. That was a Bellator 255 in April of this year. A minute gone in the final round. Eric Dixon told Jeremy Kennedy that Emmanuel Sanchez was going to come after him. That's exactly what happened. Drop or change of levels by Jeremy Kennedy. Takes the fight to the ground. Gets the back. This is exactly what he wanted. Sanchez said that tonight was about winning at all costs. And three and a half minutes now remain in this fight. Body triangle employed by Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy's got his right arm. It's trapped inside of the arm of Emmanuel Sanchez. Emmanuel knows it. That's why he's laying to that side. Even though he wants to get out of the body triangle, he needs to actually go to the other side and put that foot to the ground. Ring blocking is Sanchez under three minutes left in the round, and Sanchez needs to try to find a way to escape the body triangle. Needs to get this fight back on its feet. No sense of urgency. And time continues to tick away. Kennedy more than happy to continue to ride it out from back, looking again for the rear naked choke. Looking for that. It's not in position right now. Base crank. It is not an easy thing to get against someone that knows what they're doing. But Jeremy Kennedy should now switch to that mount position, look for the arm triangle, or start to do damage with heavy strikes. 
Sanchez moving himself Push up. The more that he can actually climb that cage, the better position he's going to be in getting away from Jerry McKinney or changing the position. Sanchez right in front of his trainer, Duke Rufus. And now Sanchez employing a hold on the neck of Kennedy. And he's got the neck and he's got the arms in place, but he's got nothing with the legs that's going to create the pressure that he needs to make that choke work. Submission wins for Sanchez. None of them via guillotine choke looking to pull out Jeremy, the victory. Jeremy Kennedy is not in danger right now with this choke. He's just relaxing in the position. And Sanchez has to be careful not to burn out his arms. Oh, yeah. Burn out your arms. There's only a minute left in the fight. you got to do something, but you've got to do something to create more pressure on this choke. And he does not have that based upon his leg position. A minute left. It looks good in pro wrestling. He would go unconscious, but this is the real fight, Marlon. He knows what he's doing. That is not a dangerous position right now for Jeremy Kennedy. to get that leg over the top. Possibly get that knee up inside. There's Jack Kennedy. Kennedy pops his head out, and now with 20 seconds left, it is Kennedy in top position, looking for the biggest victory of his career, looking to knock off the number four ranked Emmanuel Sanchez, who has twice vied for the Bellator featherweight title. Kennedy, Sanchez, go the distance. Bellator 272 wrapping up the year for Bellator MMA here at the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. We just witnessed Emmanuel Sanchez and Jeremy Kennedy go the distance in this featherweight fight. Michael C. Williams has the name of the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side, Doug Crosby, Rob McCarthy, David Hagen, all have it exactly the same at 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy. The biggest win of his career for Jeremy Kennedy. Kennedy, let's go to Big John McCarthy. I am here with Jeremy Kennedy after a very grinding and grueling but dominant performance. You, in your prior fights, started to become someone that was a stand-up guy with all that grappling skill, and I know you had some coaches that were not too happy with you. Talk to me about what your game plan was coming in here. Uh, first and foremost, I want, you know, I've been looking forward to this, uh, having an interview with Big John McCarthy. My third fight in Bellator finally happened. Um, I can't seem to kind of kind of find it, you know. Last fight, my coaches got mad at me, you know. Like I, I got a, I got a world class, a, an atomic bomb, is what my coach says. It's a fa hundred mile fastball. I got to use it. And uh, last fight, I didn't. I wanted to try to mix it up, change up my style. And uh, I was competitive, but I had to, you know, get back to my roots. Um, I would have liked to mix it up a bit more. But Sanchez, man, he's in your face the whole time. It's hard to to dictate that, you know, that good calculated range. He kind of just came right at me and I had to go right to my roots. And I put a lot of pressure on myself for this one. I had a very close friend pass. Um, he was in my corner from the last few fights. Uh, Kyle Boom Rays. Uh, I didn't want to go home with a loss. I didn't want to take any extra, ch any chance, zero chances whatsoever. I wanted to win every single exchange. 30-27, I wanted to win every second of every moment of this fight and I didn't care what that looked like. I had to get the W and I put all that on my, on my shoulders. Next time around, I'm, I'm gonna get back to having fun but find that happy medium. Like me and my coach says, it's a, it's a teeter-totter, you know? Gotta find the happy medium and I'm just a little bit swaying right now. And uh, yeah, this one was for Boom. Don't care, I, I need to get my hand raised at all costs. I wasn't coming here without, without a win.
I want to tell you, you just beat the guy who is ranked number four. You should be moving up in the Bellator rankings. I want to congratulate you on an outstanding, tough, grinding victory. And yeah, I just want to get some respect on my name, man. I, I wanted to get high on those rankings. The bookies had me at an underdog, you know, ranked number ninth. Like, come on. I've been around, man, fought in all the best world, like, promotions. Let's go. Come on. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Jeremy Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy, you owe your coach's dinner.